November the 2nd, 2022. I can't believe we're coming up to the end of the year already. This is things getting crazy. Time is flying, guys. It's um, time to do this, though, again. So welcome back to my vlog. Rudwin, Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's good to hear. It's always good to hear. How's uh, Florida? Hot. Is it really? It, right now, it is 84 degrees here. 84 degrees. So, it's cooling off in Vegas, let me tell you. It's going to be cold tonight. It's going to be the first cold day. Today is the day. This is I it. I hate that switching of weather. <laughs> it means fires and fireplaces. That's, That's another thing we should maybe maybe make a public announcement. On the 6th of November, we fall back an hour. We lose an hour. We fall backwards. Mm. November 6th. That's I hate when up. that happens. So, um, one more announcement. Uh, I disorderly, here for you. Disorderly product news. Some of you were asking. Didn't know if it was a rumor going around. Um, I was reached out to by someone and uh, looked it up. And um, unfortunately, uh, Joe from Disorderly Product News has passed away. So, no more Disorderly Product News. No. It's a nice guy. Anyway. He seemed to be. He seemed to be. I didn't know him, but uh, I spoke to him once on the phone. I had him on the show once. He had me on his show. And... Um, he took me around Chicago too for an afternoon when we were out there. I um, remember that drive. Yeah, I remember yeah. that drive. So, yeah. Anyway, rest in peace, Joe. Uh, on a happier note, Red, did you get to watch it? Did you get to watch it? You get to watch what? ABC. Yes. The Nightlife. Yes. I told yes. you guys we were going to do the Nightline thing, right? Yeah, it was great. It was yeah, great. They, they, they did the Nightline, and it uh, it, it aired. Um, it, it was a small section aired on Nightline itself on um, ABC. Mm -hmm. Then there was part that uh, ended up uh, on Hulu. So if you guys have Hulu, you can watch it. It's called The show is called Impact X Nightline, and that's the full version. And they had, uh, they had uh, Oscar Goodman on. They had... Uh, Jeff Schumacher from the Mob Museum on. They had you on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they showed the tour. It was really cool. I liked I liked what the the sound bites they used. Look at the sound bite of Oscar. Look, look, listen to this. Bury them in the, the desert. They didn't throw the body into Lake Mead. It didn't make any sense to me as far as a mob hit was concerned. Seems uh, very amateurish. Okay. And then, and then they use <laughs> this. There is no mob. <laughs> well, it, it is in his section. Allegedly, he was a henchman for the mob, you know, and allegedly this guy was this and allegedly that. Um, I like how I like Oscar. I like how he, he uh, works his way around things. He's but a good attorney. Then they use then they use this soundbite. He crawls into a barrel and shoots themselves in the head. OK, <laughs> it just isn't. That's a mob hit. <laughs> that look at you. That's so serious. That soundbite, I think, two times, two or three times in it. So. Anyway, that was fun. So it was a it was, good uh, show. Yeah, it was fun. So if you guys get a chance, go look it up. It's uh again, it's on Hulu and uh it's called Impact X Nightline. So um yeah, JW too young, DPN, too young. I think he was 41. So 42. 42? Yeah. yeah. That's 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 just that's sad. Um, so today we're going to talk about where it all began. 
and how the hell the outfit came to be. And, uh, and we'll have a little discussion about this because, I don't know, we needed a subject this week. And we thought, well, we're going to talk about the Chicago outfit. But what are we going to talk about about the Chicago outfit? The origins, the beginning. Why not? Let's do a little origins about uh, how it kind of came to be. Because all the crime back then in the early 1900s, late 1800s was going on in New York. Right, Red? Yes. Chicago was just kind of being set. When was, you know, when was Chicago? It had crime, but it wasn't organized. When was that? Uh, 1901. They had the black hair. Uh, 1776. So it was growing through the 1800s. There had to have been, there had to have been crime going there was on. was crime, but it wasn't organized crime. Gotcha. Like today so yes. so got it okay. great fire 1871 okay so i'm just skimming i'm skimming pages as we're talking here red uh and let me read some comments just because i know you guys are chiming in right now uh looks like joe's in the room joe colada how's it going uh it's good to see you and uh why is oscar denying the mob he's about the old he's about the old one <laughs> Uh, you know, I think it's funny, Scott H., because I used to say it um, years ago. It was in the script uh, on the mob tour when the museum was going to open. The museum opened after the mob tour. What was it? Oh, nine or ten, I think. Um, but he made the announcement, hey, let's build a mob museum, turn the old post office into it. And we used to say on the tour. So, you know, Oscar was quoted as saying there's no such thing as the mob. And then years later, he became the mayor and said, hey, I got an idea. Let's build a museum about something that didn't exist. <laughs> Interesting museum, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's pretty. Uh, I think it's the only it's the only uh, museum that was built on something that didn't exist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Julie, uh, Julie M. James Weldon, new to the show. Hi, how you doing? Days of Hinky Dink, Tom Coes. Uh, Don Chichil, good to see you today. And uh, thank you for the uh, for the article that you sent me. Uh, it was pretty interesting. Welcome, everyone. Yes. So, um, so back to this. Uh, Al Capone from Brooklyn comes down to Chicago. He came down to Chicago. 16 years old. Okay. And now how, how is Johnny Torrio and him tie together? I believe they were related, uh, a distant cousin, uncle, relative, or something like that. He was supposed mm -hmm. to watch out for him. Okay. So Prohibition went on, started. And, you know, the politicians, they're the ones that said, hey, Prohibition, right? Make it a law. And that kind of enabled this organized crime in a way, don't you think? Oh, Yeah. I mean, it, it created it created a bombardment <laughs> right. of organized crime. And not just only Italian, Irish, whatever. I mean, Joe Kennedy made a fortune off of Prohibition. They all did. Right. So they're making, making a, a, a ton off of it. And, of course, the politicians are in their pockets. The judges, right? the police. With everybody. money. With money, they bought all those things. So everything's, and, and back then, I mean, think this is a different, way different time. There's not, there's no cameras, cameras everywhere. You know, there wasn't anything like that back then. If somebody came up with a camera, a big flash and crap, you knew it was Yeah, you a really camera. had a whole still for it too. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So, I mean, it, you know, so that's why there's so few pictures and photos of these guys. Sonny uh, Zorro said it started in 1920. Or 1910, excuse me, with Colosimo. And it wasn't the outfit until 1920. And I think he's accurate. I think you're accurate, Sonny. Uh, outfit rose to power in the 20s, right? Under Torrio and Capone. Right, but Colosimo was there in 1910. So Capone got it, it convicted of tax evasion in 31. That's when, all right, off to jail. <laughs> with syphilis that you caught in the brothel. While you were about to he had it, he just didn't treat it. Did he know he, he had, had it? Really? Yeah, he had it. He knew he had it. He just didn't they, they he didn't go in for treatment. That's all. 
It was said later that if he'd gone in for treatment earlier in the early stage, they could have they could have uh, saved his life. You know, they 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 made that movie Capone, and he, the guy who played him portrayed him uh, was very. He acted like uh, he was losing his mind, like a you know some kind of hallucinations and things were going on. Well, that's what, what they said was going on when he was down in uh, when he got out of prison. Well, that's the reason they let him out of prison. Oh, he was totally harmless. He was afraid of needles, Red. Ah, I didn't know that. He's afraid of needles, so he didn't want to go. Uh, he didn't want to go get. Uh, he didn't well, they didn't have treatment. penicillin then, but they had uh, they had uh, hmm. sulfa drugs that they could treat it with. Sure, it wasn't a, meant to be fatal unless you let it go. Okay, the the Wasserman, what's this called? The Wasserman, um, Wasserman test, yeah. test Wasserman needed test. a spinal tap, a spinal tap, and he said no. I would have said no too. Hmm. Ever had a spinal tap? No, uh, no, no, no. They're not uh, fun at all, guy. <laughs> that's I wouldn't imagine that it uh, that it would be. No. You feel like you got hit in the back of the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> sure. Sure. Oh my gosh. Well, so um, Big Jim Colosino was mainly a pimp. Torrio and Capone thought he was small time and wanted to make money in more illegal activities, according to American Gangster. I believe that. Big Jim needed help because the black hand was extorting him, so his wife's uncle was Torrio. Oh, here's the connection. His wife's uncle was Torrio. She sent for him. He came to Chicago and became Colosimo's second in command. Right. Hmm. Okay. So, the uh, yeah, I agree with you. I didn't like that movie. I really didn't. No. So, Al Capone, I I'd rather you. have four quarters than 100 pennies. <laughs> Does it really say that? Uh mm -hmm. So Watch the movie around. documentary on Prohibition, three-part series spanning five hours, a must-watch. Well, you, you you know, maybe that's uh maybe that's something to look up. Take a look and see. So as Chicago grew in the 30s, the 40s, and everything kept um, kept expanding, New York, these five families fighting against each other. Chicago, they're breaking up into crews now, and they're working together. Not really. At that time, Aiello was there, Danny Aiello. There were, or Aiello, I forgot what his name was. And he was fighting with Big Jim, and he was also fighting with uh, uh, Torrio. He tried to murder him. As well, that's what that caused uh, Torrio to retire, retire and hand the operation over to Al Capone. Got you. So... Did he deal drugs? No, not at all. There was no drug dealing in those days. Period. So it was just it was just liquor. Yeah, well, they, cocaine was legal then too. They sold cocaine in pharmacies and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, Don Cheech has got it. Giuseppe Aiello. Giuseppe Aiello. Okay. So Giuseppe. All right, and then and then how did how did the, the so now so now you got you got Capone and they got the beer wars going on in Chicago because that was the thing that happened, and you had the North Side Gang with Dean O'Banion, and different well there were different different gangs, correct? The Irish Gang, right? So now they're starting to get into wars, and that's the same Valentine's Day massacre. When things like this started happening and the car bombings and the uh, 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 all of that went on to get rid of each other's, right? Right. Okay. And eventually, they're the ones, the only, only, only ones left. Well, I think I, going way back in that era, uh, Rika and uh, Marshall Cofano were involved in the bombings, the car bombings. They were just teenagers, though. So Nitty, Nitty was the force behind Capone, Rick Charlton. 
Well, they called him the enforcer. But he was he enforced a lot of rules. So he was convicted of tax evasion in 31 and went for an 18 month sentence, they said, and then was released in 32. And he took the new place. And he was claustrophobic. He took his Very place. Claustrophobic. That's what you told before you said that, that, that he was. I must have been a bitch for those 18 months. He took a place, uh, his place as the new boss of the Capone gang. Some revisionist historians claim that Nitty was a mere front boss while Paul the Waiter Rico was the actual boss of the Chicago outfit at that point. I think they were both joined at the hip. I mean, it was they were working together. Working together. Time. Yeah. Hmm. American Gangster. Back then, cocaine was a, uh, originally an elixir meant to help cure opiate addiction. Correct. Wow. Let's go from one drug to another. <laughs> That's what they did. Well, you know. <laughs> Let's go from alcohol to something else. You know? <laughs> this is the cure for heroin. Start snorting yeah. this stuff. You know, <laughs> what? <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, Don Ciccio. The mafia faction in the Chicago went by the name. Went by the name. Oh, boy. You got to be kidding me. Really, Don? You're going to do this to me? <laughs> Union, uh, Union Siciliano. Siciliano, I know that part. Union Siciliano. Union yeah. Siciliano. Union. Yeah, Union. I can't say it. Un, un, union. Un, union. <laughs> it looks like uni, Union. Uni 1. If you really look at it like English, that would be Uni 1. But it's not. It's, uh, it's Italian, so it's Union. Union. Yeah. I think it's Union. Sist this guy watches too many movies. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you know, you, 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 Yone. You, Yone. Yeah, yeah. Siciliano. Is. Got it. You. <laughs> oh, okay. I got that. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Van Pastor, man. I'm you every time when we do these uh, shows. Have to. You now, know. did he not die by being thrown off a building? He committed suicide. Oh, yeah. No, he, he committed suicide. Um, and, uh, and When they told him he had to go back to prison, he said, no way. <laughs> they told him he had to take the fall. Spirit of Justice, the Sigma empath, didn't did he kill himself? Yes. Yep, that's correct. Welcome to the show. I've never seen your name before. I always wondered why the Chicago family name uh, would be, if not, outfit. It was well because because that's what the soldiers back then they called them outfits of soldiers in the uh, in the army. I believe it was right, Red. Right. So they I'm with this outfit. I'm with that, that yeah. outfit. I'm right. with these. So uh, the it's kind of military thing. reference is what it was. It was a military he, Capone kind of coined it and said, this is my outfit because it wasn't all Sicilian. There was Polish. There was uh, Irish. There was all different. Uh, there was all different kinds of factions, nationalities. So it was the outfit. Yeah. James Marvin, to this day, they are um, still outfit relatives everywhere in Cicero and Chicago government. There are. Yeah. There's still, I mean, there is still tentacles that reach out that, you know, people who are in different positions of um, political power, business power, uh, that, that work with each other. Why not? That's, right, network. <laughs> Did you see Anthony's comment here? <laughs> Anthony Martini Is he yeah. in the room? <laughs> No, I didn't see it. <laughs> it would have been called used, used guys. guys. <laughs> it would have been called used guys. <laughs> oh, hey guys, did you mention? Uh, did you get a chance to check out the great grandfather Accardo Bosa NFL Brothers Connection? Isn't it his grandson? Isn't it Accardo? It is. It's in the NFL. Yes. I never looked up. I don't even know what, what what's his he name. He has two grandsons that play ball, but uh, that one's probably the most famous. 
The feared mob boss, whose great so great grandson is one of history's most feared mobsters, 49ers, Nick Bosa. There you go. Huh. Here, save image. Let's put it in there. Downloads. You guys want to see what Nick Bosa looks like? Here he is. So, um, um, doo -doo. yeah, the, you know, isn't it interesting? Uh, you talk about uh, you talk about um, the outfit and sports, and you also come up with those names, uh, Rosenthal. Both of the kids became champion distance swimmers, and I think one of them competed in the Olympics. Don't quote me on that, but I think that that's a, a thing. I think they were on the team. They didn't compete, but they were on the team. They were they, on the team. They were on the Olympic team. Okay, so that's uh, yeah, that's what uh, that's what I'd heard somewhere, and that's what I heard somewhere. Don't know where, but yeah. Okay, so I can't find it. Believe that. Okay, anyway, I'll um, I'll see if I can find it here. Jim Magnifici made a comment about some of his relatives went into witness protection. Um, some of his relatives did. Yes, I believe he's a former police officer too. All right, it's not going to be very big, but here you go. He, there, that's the Cardo's. <laughs> Great grandson, Nick Bosa. I bet he was proud of him. Sure, of course. What 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 grandfather father wouldn't be? You know, sure. Really? Yeah, that's uh, you know, that's an achievement. So, uh, back to the comments, guys. Sorry, we're going off in different directions here. Uh, see you next month, uh, Scott H. I'm uh, looking forward. If you guys, if you guys didn't know, um, we are this close to opening the uh, Vegas crime tour. It's uh, yes. coming soon. Very, this is, I'm so excited about it. Uh, all the different things that we're doing, uh, I'm talking about and going past on the tour and what we're gonna be showing on the tour. It's going to be awesome. And if you're in town, be sure to check out the mob tour. It's, uh, it's, it's going, I'm doing it. So come, uh, come see. It. Join us for the Vegas mob tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie Casino and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never-before-seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall Gang. This is how serious we thought he saw. Sounds like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the driveway. Here's an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course dinner at the Tuscany Garden and then VIP seating for the long-running hit, The Rat Pack is Back Show. Experience Vegas, the way it was meant to be. Nobody crawls into a barrel and shoots themselves in the head, okay? <laughs> it just isn't, that's a mob hit. <laughs> <laughs> You're so serious to him. That's a mob hit. <laughs> That's a mob hit. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Uh, so, see what um, Joe, Joe Colada added here? No, let's see it. Joe Colada. I wonder if I uh, the for you. John Aiello was related to Giuseppe Aiello from the 36th Ward. Hey, who knows? He's not the only person that wondered that because I've heard a lot of people talk about it and you know, they wondered the same thing. There you go. Don Chichio saying, I'm pretty sure he was Mr. Joe. <laughs> so, yeah, there's uh, there's that's happening. I, I, you always learn so many things when we talk about this stuff and we and we do these shows. I really, uh, it's great. So, yeah, William, Michael Graham, uh, Butcher Boy Adam on Nightline. LOL, yeah. See? See? Awesome. So I can't wait to show the commercial for the crime tour, by the way. That's going to be, it's going to be, be awesome. 
Very cool. Ricardo did watch his grandson, Eric, play football at OPRP High School. Yes. What's OPRP High School stand for? He was, uh, I forget what the name of it was. It was in, um, I, I'm I, don't think he, I don't think you ever saw him at the Ohio State or his brief stint in the NFL. No. Hmm. But he was actually photographed at, I'm trying to think of the name of that school, and um, he was actually photographed in the stands watching him. Rick Charlton, I'll bet you a hat the cops would have talked to Frank about the barrels. I'll bet you they would have stopped over. Why not? Guaranteed. Yeah, Guaranteed. Uh, probably a hundred percent. They would have. They would have names that started would have coming up. That would have been coming up with the police. Would have been Frank Galato. Would have been one of them. Right. Let's talk to him and see. Maybe he knew. I don't know. Maybe he did know. Maybe they wouldn't. Maybe it's something he forgot about. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Joe Colada, I cut his hair when I worked at Igor's barber shop. Okay. Now, who's he talking about? Joe? Uh, he's talking about Ocardo's grandson. Grandson? Yes. Oh, wow. That's great. So, so I think that's what he's talking about. And um Joe, can I an old hey, world bar barber oh, yes, shop? Sir? Yes great. or no? Can I hey Joe, yes or no? Can I can I tell everybody? Put it in the thing, yes or no, if I can tell the people, the audience, the prescribers. This is you guys are gonna you guys are gonna love this if if he says yes. The name of that school was Oak Park River Forest High School. Oak Park River Forest High School. It's on First Avenue in Madison. Right. So thanks, Michael Graham. Uh yeah. Bobby Bag of Donuts is in the room. It's good to see you. Welcome in. And uh so so from there, Red, we had um, you had uh, 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 Cardo, Rika, and then there were several other bosses, right? Well, there, there were bosses. Some... They're not named in Wikipedia, but there were bosses in between there. In uh, and out. Pardon me? In and out. Yes. Well, like uh, Jackie Cerrone. He was in and out several times. He was like an intern boss until they get another one ready. But we have uh, Joey Yupa that was in there. We have uh, <clears throat> uh, Ferriola. He was in there. That was a short term. Milwaukee Phil was in there, too. He was a boss for, what was it, two years? Yeah. Three years? Yeah, right. And then it went, uh, you went, and you get more current then up into the 80s, 90s. It seemed like the bosses all went to prison except Ricardo. You know, why would you get into it if you if that was the? I guess I don't know. Maybe it's just the certain people are probably built for it, right? I guess. Uh, from what I've heard from different people, they said uh, it comes with the territory, right? So if you get involved with it, you know, you know, maybe that someday you're going away. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that told. Several people told me that. They said, someday you're going to have to do your bit. Right. Phil Amato told me that. He said, someday you're going to have to do your bit. I asked him what he went to prison for. He wouldn't tell me. And he said, someday you'll have to do your bit. Maybe you didn't do it. You're going to have to do it time for somebody else. Okay. But when you're asked to, you're asked to. That's it. I just shook my head and said, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going. Um. Okay. So, so, uh, let's do a little poll here. We have, we have a difference of opinion here. We got, uh, Joe Colada that says Provisio East is on Provisio. 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 First in Madison. Yes. Not Oak Park River Forest School. I o thought it was Provisio. I thought it was Provisio East. I guess there was a proviso west and a proviso east. I thought it was proviso east because there was a photograph of Tony Accardo taken there. He was uh, in the stands watching his uh, his grandson. Uh, so Oak Park is a school. High school is a woke mess now. Well, I don't doubt it. 
I don't know how to say your name. S. I don't either. And I've seen it before. Zolk. Zolk. We have some new people in here. Hey, yeah, welcome to the room, guys. It's uh, it says, just a segment path. They have big egos. Boss is the brass ring. Yeah, it's what it's the ego, right? It's just, I mean, why not? It's the power, too. You get that. Both Bossa brothers are in the NFL. Oh, oh, really? One plays for the 49ers and the other for the Chargers. Who would have thought? I thought it was just one. No. Two grandsons, huh? Two great grandsons. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, were there any outfit guys at the infamous Appalachian meeting? The Appalachian meeting. There were. Uh, there. We I were think, represented by somebody. I don't. Chicago was represented by somebody, but um, I know there was a wiretap, and it was done out in Willow Springs, and it was somebody from New York. They were talking to somebody from Chicago. I'm not sure. It might have been Ralph Capone or somebody in Willow Springs. They picked up the wiretap, and it said, "You know, if you guys would have been here in our town, we wouldn't have had that kind of problem because we own it." We own the police, and they did. The Willow Springs police, Cicero police, everything was owned. So if they would have had the meeting in Chicago, they wouldn't have had that kind of problem. But Chicago only represented one faction. They had five families. Getting five families together was probably a problem. Not to mention Buffalo. Yeah, exactly. That would be uh, that would be a, a lot of uh, a lot of work. So. That would be a lot. Um, hey, Red, we're um, oh man, I got two phones going. Hold on one second. You're getting buzzed. <clears throat> you were there. Okay. Okay, I got Joe Collada on the phone. It was Sam Giancana that said that. I don't know if that was his tour or not. So, so uh, Red, hold on a second. What'd you What'd you want to say, Joe? It wasn't the Bosa brothers. I didn't know the Bosa brothers. I, I John Aiello, the alderman from the thirty sixth ward, was my customer. Mine and Igor's. Oh, that was the, so. Those the, that's who you cut the hair for. Yeah, John Aiello. He was the alderman. Oh God, got to be forty years ago or better. In huh? the 30s, maybe more than that. 50, 50 years, years ago, ago, Joe, I believe. 50? Yeah, 50. 50. Yeah, probably 50 years ago. Yeah, probably. It was at least, yeah, close to 50 years ago. Can, okay, can, can, can we, can we uh, tell them about yeah. bar Barbershop Confidential? Yeah, go right ahead. So, everybody, check this out. This is the coolest thing that we're going to do. So, so, so Joe and I are going to sit down and we're going to make a couple of, um, we're going to make some short videos. And they're all barbershop stories that Joe has about cutting Lefty Rosenthal's hair, having different guys, wise guys going in and out of the shop and different things that have happened. Push one in the comments if you guys want us to do this. Push two if you don't. Quite a crew. <laughs> we're, gonna get, we're not going to get a single two. You know that, right? Oh, I would think so. No, I think that they're going to. I think it's a great idea. Great stories for me, Gore Shop. Yep, all barbershop stories. Here we got the ones that are coming up. <laughs> Holman Sanders, Loomis Grin, lots Scott of ones. H. Yes, lots of ones. It, it won't be anything bad. It won't be anything bad. It'll be all funny Experience stories. You. Yeah, funny, funny stories, right? It's just funny stories. No one, no one's feelings will get hurt. There you go. And so uh, that's uh, that's what we're gonna do. And I and 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 I love the way Joe because Joe tells me stories on the phone. And he tells great stories. He's a great storyteller. I mean, it's not, I'm not it saying. It must be hereditary. It must be. <laughs> <laughs> it's it must in the jeans, be. Joe. That's awesome. I couldn't hear what he just said. Uh, what'd you say, Red? I said it's in the jeans. It's in yeah, the jeans. Prob probably. It's genetic. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. So. Yeah, all right. We'll get that thing prepared and we'll do it. Awesome. It'll be, all, it'll be all funny stories. That's awesome. John, John Aiello was a client. He used to go to me or Igor. He was a nice, nice man. Very nice man. Helped a lot of people. That's awesome. 
Okay. It's awesome. Looking forward to so, talking to you soon, Joe. Okay, bye, pal. All right, bye-bye. See you later, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, buddy. That's nice of Joe to call in. And that's what we're going to do, Barbershop Confidential. You know, and it's not just that, Red, that I wanted to tell everybody about, but we're, we're going to do another little bit, you know, because let's face it, we have uh, – we have um, uh, the holidays coming, which means YouTube's going to slow down. Uh, it's going to. And so we're going to have to make some extra content or do something. And uh, Anthony Demartini came up with a great idea and said, hey, you guys want to, you know, film some stuff and let's, let's talk crime. Let's just talk crime and different things crime wise. Different outstanding and things, too. Like the Our Lady of Angels fire? Right. The Our Lady Most of Angels people probably fire. don't know about that. No, I didn't know about it, okay? And I, I didn't know about it. And I uh, heard about it and went, whoa. I remember when I was a kid, it was on the news. Yeah, I never even heard about that. So when I learned about that, and, and, and you know, again, that's what it would be. Is like The biggest thing I learned about it was uh, it changed the whole fire code system for Chicago. Oh, sure it did, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, be careful sharing screen audio. December 1958, know. William Davison's got here, it right here. here. Here it is, Red. This is what, this is what, um, Anthony, Red, and I are going to make some videos. And here is the intro that Anthony made. Check this out, guys. <laughs> Can you hear it? Oh, yeah. Some well, wait a minute, Tom. Oh, for Carmine. You said before I saw him. He had a suitcase and everything that he left. Carmine left? Huh? Carmine left. Carmine left. <laughs> Carmine left. <laughs> Carmine left. Oh, a couple of people. Carmine left. Oh, Anthony's here. Yeah, on this. Okay, on the screen. <laughs> anyway. So uh, that was an awesome intro that you put together, Anthony. And uh, thanks. And I'm looking forward to making some uh, some uh, content and uh, stuff that you know everybody's going to enjoy listening to. I think we can stray a little bit from uh, outfit and talk more crime and different events, and you know keep it Chicago based. And I I think uh, I think the audience, I think you guys are going to go for it. So it'll be a little change of pace, but hey, it's going to be some more more stories to listen to, right? Yes. There you go. That's it. So, Red, uh, we had a great time today. I had a lot of fun. And uh, it is uh, time to wrap because we got to get to your uh, topic on your channel. And, yes. Uh, Are you going to read for me today? <laughs> uh, I, yes, I, I sure am. So we're going to be reading Red's book. Uh, we're going to be starting at the beginning and for the next few weeks. We're going to read through the book, and you guys can kick back, listen. It's going to be like an audio book, but we're going to be able to interrupt and take questions as things come up. Because I know when I read the book, I had some questions about it, and I asked Red um, because it does it jumps around at some points. There, it jumps back and forth, you know, in time. So the timeline, it's so anyway. That's what we're going to do. So if you guys um, want to. Jump on over to his channel. We should be going up at about uh, about 10 minutes. So, uh, And we'll put a card in here after the fact. It'll be a link over to that video. So, Red, it's been fun. You have a great day, sir. And, uh, guys, God bless. Have a, have a safe and have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Redness Day. And uh, that was fun. Have a great day, guys. Mob vlog.